Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I don't think I have ever been more excited to do an unboxing episode than today. We have some really cool stuff here, as well as something that's going to help the channel hopefully become better, but we'll talk about that one later. Let's start with this guitar. So I've recently been doing quite a few reviews and demos for other people to help them sell their guitars. And this one is quite interesting to say the least. I think you guys will get a kick out of this review and demo because it's just, it's a little bit out there, but it kind of has a cool little history behind it as far as being a charity guitar. And it just also happens to share a brand name with a guitar company that's doing really well right now, doing like really cheap knockoff guitars, like super cheap Les Pauls and 335s. But, oh, apparently it's Christmas. <laughs> that is a good way to use up uh, your old wrapping paper that you don't need anymore as packing materials. It's a little bit heavier than normal packing paper that will take up more space, but hey, it's recycling, saving the earth, right? Well, let's just get into this one because I don't want to talk too much about it because you got to save it for the review and demo. This is all you really need to see. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what do we got here today, guys? Is it a fish guitar? No, this is a breast cancer awareness guitar. <laughs> this reminds me of something that Prince would play or something like that. It's just kind of an interesting out there guitar. And the reason why I'm thinking that, he actually has a purple guitar that's kind of in a similar shape, not exactly the same, but then the headstock here. <laughs> it's a guitar, that's, that's what I'll say. It's surprisingly a set neck and construction though. It appears to have arrived just fine. And we all know charity guitars sell for crazy money at those charity auctions, but when it comes to the aftermarket resale value, not quite as much. So we'll learn a lot more about this in the full review and demo. And maybe you guys can help me. Do you recognize any of these signatures? I'll have to do some research myself, but maybe you guys can point some things out to make my life a little bit easier. And now unboxing number two. This is normally the sponsored unboxing. And while yes, this is slightly sponsored, I don't consider this something that I was paid to do. So about two to three weeks ago, I did an episode about the Tosin Abasi Telecaster that was just, you know, crazy looking that was released at NAMM, I believe last year. And I had mentioned in that video that I would be interested in checking out one of those Genty Metal Guy guitars that's are like eight strings, fan frets, true temperament, whatever. Just the, all the crazy stuff. And I actually got a reach out from a company that said, hey, we've been watching your channel for the past couple of weeks. We would love to see one of our guitars on your channel. They weren't necessarily looking to sponsor an episode. They just wanted to send me a guitar. And if I liked it, I could keep it. And I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. And I believe you guys will actually like to get to check this thing out. But the company is Ormsby Guitars. And I've actually heard of these guys before. So <laughs> having a company send me a guitar that I've heard of, that's good news for the channel. This case is interesting. It's almost like sparkly. That definitely was not what I was expecting. But we were kind of talking back and forth between what model would work best for me as well as a review and demo. I picked out three of them and I said, do not tell me. Don't tell me what you're sending me. I want it to be a complete surprise because at first we were gonna do the eight string, but then once I learned that I could keep the guitar, if I liked it, I was like, well, I don't know, maybe we should go a seven string. I could see myself using a seven string, but an eight string beyond my capabilities right now. But who knows, maybe I actually got the six string or the eight string, whatever it is, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yes! I was hoping for this one. Is it six string? Yep. I was kind of looking forward to the seven string, but at the same time, this is something I would actually want to use. So thank you Ormsby for the six string one. So how does this actually differ from a regular guitar then? It's got the multi-scale thing. And I'll go ahead and explain all that in the review and demo of what multi-scale means. And it'll be interesting to get to finally try out something that has 
these frets that are slanted. Wow, that, that's freaky. Can't wait to do the full review and demo of this one. Oh man, they even sent me a, a shirt. That's nice. And you get your truss rod adjustments. Matching pick. <laughs> it looks like we even get a matching blue strap. Now let's go ahead and find out what's in this big box. Now, I hope it's not a surprise mystery to you guys that when a company does sponsor a video on my channel for this unboxing video, not necessarily the Ormsby one, they just sent me a guitar because they wanted to, but I'm talking like the Distro Kid one, they do pay me money. So I usually like to invest it back into my channel if possible. So every time you see me use this thing, think of Distro Kid because I'm actually really appreciative that they helped me purchase this. So, no, it's not guitar related, but I think you guys will appreciate it anyways. So if you're a photography nerd and like all of the gear and stuff, you might enjoy this unboxing. But this, I don't remember getting this, but maybe that's just an added bonus. <laughs> this is called a gimbal, and it's what you use in order to get really smooth camera shots. So I recently started to do a lot more B-roll in my full reviews and demos, and I have never once seen a comment say, you have awesome B-roll, man. And I'm kind of sad about that. So that's why I bought this thing. They're not super cheap by any means, but I think it's gonna be well worth the investment within the channel. I really wanna get into cameras a little bit more to understand them. Because if there's one YouTuber that does guitars that knows his camera work, it's Paul Davids. And I would love to be able to get some juicy B-roll like that guy does. So I'm hoping instead of my handheld stuff being a little bit shaky, this will start making things look cool. This is kind of weird. It's like one of those styrofoam coolers. I was expecting like a hard shell case. Not quite that. But I will definitely have to take some time to get used to this. And now for our last unboxing of the day. I saved the best one for last. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So about, what, two, three months ago, I got my dream guitar and I listed it for what I thought was a more than fair price, but then it sold really fast. I was really sad about it, sad enough to make it the main feature of that unboxing and shipping out video. And people were always telling me, oh, why did you sell that guitar? Why did you sell that guitar? Why did you sell it for so cheap? But I was browsing Reverb one night and I just happened to see that it was listed for sale again. And it was only there for about an hour. And being the business guy that I am, I hit him up and I said, hey, would you like to trade that guitar back in? Like I offered him a partial refund based off of what he paid me. And we just processed it as a return because then he got his sales tax and stuff back. And that, that really is what it was. It was just a return. And I had absolutely zero issues with taking this guitar back because it was a special guitar that I should have kept longer. And it's not every day that I get a guitar back like this. Sometimes you'll sell a special guitar and never get the chance to see it again. But I think you guys will be happy to see the return of this custom shop prototype guitar. Welcome home, Kazuyoshi Saito prototype. <laughs> She's back! She came back to me, guys. And I think that's a sign that I need to keep this one. But I am a man that everything I own is for sale. But let me tell you, this will not be anywhere near as cheap as it was the first time. It will be priced to stay with me for quite a while. Because sometimes absence makes the heart grow fonder, and I really didn't appreciate just how special this guitar was. I don't think I'll do another review and demo because I did a pretty good job in that video, but maybe we'll do some new B-roll shots right here for you guys. And it looks like it survived the trip just fine. That was the only thing I was worried about, that these finish checks might spread. Those were there initially. And we have that small little paint run that I remember so well. But this fretboard is so cool. There's a lot of people that thought it was Brazilian. I, it's something special, but I, I, I'm not quite sure if it's Brazilian or not. But there were a few guys that said, yes, that's definitely Brazilian. So you can check out this full review and demo if you happen to have missed it. But the Kazuyoshi Saito is now back with its rightful owner, for now anyways.
Now we've got some boxing to do. I got a couple of them lined up here. Maybe they'll be more later. We'll find out. But our first one to pack up is a guitar that when I first unboxed it, I thought, you know, it might be a hard sell. It's an unwanted guitar as far as the internet was concerned before now. But the more and more I played this thing, the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I fell in love with this thing. This is like the epitome of a fantastic Telecaster, even though it's kind of blended with a Jazzmaster. So my first official Jazz Master review was the Ultra Jazz Master, and it just didn't quite add up to what this little goofy guitar could do. So I'm looking forward to trying some other Jazz Masters out based off of these pure vintage 65 pickups. But somebody picked up a great deal on this Jazz Telly, and somebody can still get a pretty good deal on the one that I preferred, the Tobacco Sunburst one. It was just a little bit more resonant, but I just love the surf green finish. Now this one over here actually has a pretty interesting tale. So this is a guitar I reviewed, I think about two, two, three months ago, part of the Rarity series of Fenders. And in my review and demo, I said this was a special, fantastic top. And I finally found somebody that agreed with me that he said he was looking all over for a really nice one of these chambered Telecasters and he just fell in love with my top. And a lot of these are more like pinstripey flames, but this one's got almost more of a quilt going on to it. So I definitely agree with this guy that this is a spectacular example. And I especially love the wood grain on the back too. So if you missed this review and demo, you can definitely check out the full review here. It's surely a cool Telecaster guitar that I think over time, these will become one of the more collectible ones of the runs because you don't find too many chambered Telecasters out there. But where is this one being packed up to be sent off to? Well, believe it or not, Hong Kong. It's been a long time since I've shipped a guitar there. I hope your troglodytes enjoyed this really cool unboxing and boxing episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.